So good morning again to anyone who didn't say good morning earlier. Um, so what I'm going to do today, I'm going to explain indeterminate axial system. What we did last time, or yeah, what we did last time was determinant axial system. So what's the difference between determinant and indeterminant? Indeterminant, now we have the number of unknowns are higher or larger than the number of equations. So, bless you. In axial force diagram before, or like when we try to find the axial forces in the member or axial reactions, we had the number of equations equal to number of unknowns, and we were able to solve it. So what if we have now the number of unknowns are larger than the number of equations? So we need to, I mean, like in advanced classes, there's a lot of methods. One of these methods that I'm going to explain now is now we're going to use your engineering sense now to build this other equation through your knowledge of the delta and deformation. So I think that you all master now how can you tell which side the movement going to be due to forces, how the point going to move. So if you are able to determine a relation using a delta, so that's the extra equation that you're going to use to solve the problem. And when you use, when you use the deformation, the movement, the displacement to figure out this extra equation, we call it compatibility equation or kinematic equation. So in, in, in this lecture, we're going to go through three types of indeterminate system that we're going to face in this class. The first one, when we have members in series, like what, what you see here. And OK. And if I want to draw the member, or like the, the, the question itself, or the members in series, I mean, do I need this microphone? Oh, yes. You guys hear me in the back? Yeah. Okay. So in this question, for example, I'm going to ask you, what is the normal stresses in member one and member two? So if you look closely at member one and member two, I have fixation in both sides. So if I want to find the reactions, for example, I will have for example, if this is point A and this is point B, I will have AX and I will have BX. Am I able to get the, like the axial force in member one and member two? Because I have two unknowns. I have AX and BX. And how many equations do I have in X axis? It's on, no, it's only one. Because I can't use summation of Y here, right? I can't use it. It's not going to be of use here. Or I can't use summation of moment here. Because if I took summation moment at any point, there is no distance to multiply the bx and ax with, right? Again, moment is force multiplied by its perpendicular distance. So if I took a moment, for example, at a, so now a, I'll multiply by 0 because there is no distance between ax and, and, and this point. Same as bx. And again, about the 30 and 30. We will sum them in the middle and put them as a 60. And we explained that before. So the whole point here is I, don't have, I only have one equation to solve these forces. And the equation that solves forces, we, are, we call them equilibrium equation. So what should we do in this case? So I told you last time, if we want to find the forces in a member, we have two methods. We either do the cut method or we do the axial force diagram using our hands, which is like some sort of a shortcut. But in the indeterminate system, I'd rather that you all use the cut method. And for this type of a problem, I want you to take the cut first, wherever you see a plate, and the forces, and the connection between the two members. So basically, I will make a box here. And this box is going to be the cut that I'm going to make. So I'm going to take this portion out, and I'm going to draw it here. OK? So What's going to happen if I draw this plate, and I do have member 2 here, and I do have member 1 here, and here is the cut, OK? And as I told you before, imagine your cut as a joint. And we want to assume our unknowns as I always forces in tension. So I'm, I'm going to assume force in member, what's that called? Member 2, F2, and in member 1, 
F1. Nothing new here, right? This is all you know. I, I didn't explain anything new in today's lecture. So you already know how to make the cut method. You already know how to derive the forces. I'm going to put the 60 caps, which is a summation of 30 and 30 here. OK, now I want to find the relation between F1 and F2. So I would say summation Fx equals 0. And again, I'm, 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 I'm just like telling you, I'm encouraging you to use this way to find the, like to use the equilibrium equation. Summation Fx equals 0, and then an arrow like this, and write everything in one equation. So I will say minus F2 minus 60, as if anything is going to the right is negative and anything going to the left is positive. Anyone can assume the, op the opposite. So minus F, sorry, minus F1, it's not F2. And the direction I'm using here, anything goes like this way is negative, anything is use, going the right way is positive. Minus F1 minus 60 plus F2 is equal to zero. So I'm gonna find that F1 is equal to F2 minus 60. Okay, so that's one equation. And this equation, I concluded it using the equilibrium for, uh, equation that I have. So I will call this equilibrium equation. Okay, still, I wasn't able to solve for the the two forces, I, I, I only concluded one, one equation with two unknowns. It's not yet helpful. So what I need you to do is use your imagination here to figure out the other equation, which is using your knowledge in the delta. So let me explain this further. I will take this guy, copy and put it here. Same thing, it's like the same slide, just more space. So. When I have this question, and using the 60 kips, from your knowledge, from your experience, from your engineering sense, this plate gonna move to my right or my left due to the 60 kips? My right. Yeah. <laughs> my right. Okay. So if gonna move this plate to my right, I wanna show you the final location of a plate, just like. For example, it's going to be here. This is the new location of the plate. OK, so what happened here? So member two elongated by this much, right? So let me call this as delta two. OK, now what happened to member one? It shortened by amount, by this amount, right? And this amount, I will call it delta 1. Do you all agree with me? So member 2, due to the movement of that plate, member 2 elongated by that much because the plate is attached to both member 1 and member 2. So member 2 elongated by delta 2, member 1 shortened by delta 1. Let me show you something, and you, I will have you conclude this relation. What is the relation between delta 1 and delta 2? So if I took delta 1 and put it up here, aren't they equal? OK. So what's the relation between delta 1 and delta 2? That's correct. So now the other equation that we concluded using the delta, we call it compatibility equation or kinematic equation. OK? And delta 1 is equal to negative delta 2. They are both equal, but one of them in, in the other direction than the other one. OK? So how is that equation going to be useful in the process of solving the problem? What was, the diff what was the equation of delta equal? Delta 1, for example, is equal to what? F1, L1, A1, E1, right? Delta 2 is equal to F2, L2, A2, E2, right? 
you can, I mean, like everything going to be given, but not F1 and F2. So L1 going to be given, E1, A1, L2, E2, A2. So they're, they're going to be in a form of like a constant. So you're going to have something like this. F1 is equal to negative some constant F2. Now, do I have the, the other equation, right? So now, what you see here, I have two equations with the two unknowns. Am I able now to solve for F1 and F2? For example, you will take, since you know now that F1 is equal to something F2, so you're going to remove this F1 and put this value. So you're going to have F2 is equal to F2 minus 60, for example. So now you will be able to solve for F2 and go back and substitute in any of the two equations and get F1. This is the first type of problems that is indeterminate. Okay? Any questions so far in that one? Is that clear? Okay. Let's go to the other type of questions that we have coaxial or parallel axial member, where we have the members, they, they are all parallel to each other. Okay? So again, the same, the same thing when it comes to equilibrium. So I'm not worried about the equilibrium part. I am just wanna like emphasize on the incompatibility equation because equilibrium, I'm like pretty sure that you guys mastered it. It's just compatibility on, of how you derive the delta relation. So equilibrium equation, if I, the, the whole point of the equilibrium equation that I want to find a relation between the force itself and the force, the external force and the internal force in the member. So find me a cut that you can like put, make a cut that you can find the relation between all three of them. So the cut going to be anywhere within the member, anywhere. So if I find the cut, so if, if I have this, this is the, ex the plate, this is the 360, and I have the steel, I mean, they, they, they're supposed to be like the same thickness, but excuse, excuse my drawing, <laughs> okay? Okay, so let me draw it in different colors so that, so this is the steel, and this is the wood. OK? So when I make this cut here, I will have, so as you can see, I have a wood here, for example, and I have a steel plate, and I have a steel plate. So I'm going to write, I have F steel here, and I have F wood here, for example, and I have another F steel here. Do you all agree? OK, so now if I want to take, if I want to find a relation, will I take now summation fx or summation fy? Summation fy is equal to 0. I will say 360 plus f steel plus f steel plus f wood equal to 0. So I will end up having 2f steel is equal to negative 360 minus F wood. Now I have the first equation. Okay, so what I want to find now is I want to find the second equation. So let me draw it. And I need you, whenever you face any indeterminate problems, even without saying, I want you to draw all this kind of drawing. I want you to draw to me how you took your cut, where you took your cut, so that I can make sense or I can understand where, where your equation came from, OK? So let me, let me draw it to you so that it will be, I'll have you also conclude the equation for me. OK, this is the original position. And when we apply the force of P, it went like this on it.
Okay. So now I want you to tell me the relation between the wood and steel in this case. First of all, do you agree with me when we apply the P here to that plate, it's going to take everything down, right? So when you take everything down, what's the relation now between the delta wood and delta steel? Bless you. Anyone? That's right, they're equal. Do you all agree with him? Do you all agree that steel is going to deform same amount and equal direction as the wood? Right or wrong? OK, I don't want any of you to write that 2 delta steel is equal to delta wood. I need anyone to tell me why is that wrong? A, a possible explanation for this is, OK, well, I do have two steel plates. Why don't I add two? Is that right or wrong at the beginning? Tell me. You put the thickness together. So as if you're thinking we put the two, two thickness together? <laughs> then, then, then that's possible to have two deltas? But, but, but let me tell you something. You know what does that mean? That to have a two delta in a steel and equal to one delta of wood? If I, OK, it's going to be something like this. One minute. So if this is the plate, and this is going to be the steel, the wood is going to be here. So as if we are saying that the original position, which was something here, for example, so if the steel deformed by delta, then the wood is going to deform by 2 delta. That what does that mean? Oh, okay, okay. But now you understand why it's why they are not. Why, why should I remove the two now? Because they have both deformed the same amount. So don't be confused by adding two because you see two plates. You need to see the deformation itself. So if they are deformed, both of them deformed by delta. So delta steel deform as the same amount as delta wood. Is that clear to all of you? OK, let me, let me tell you something. Let me erase this to not confuse you. Now I had two independent plates, or like two separate plates. What if I had, so the wood in the middle, and instead of having two separate steel plates here, I'm having a cylinder steel. And I did, a make, I, I did make a cut. So the wood not going to be the same. So F wood, will I have 2 F steel or 1 F steel? Is that the cross-section? Oh, yeah, that's, that's a cross-section. So if I extended it that way, and I make a cut here, for example. So will I, will I take, will I have 1 F steel or 2 F steel? So remember, I had two F steel when I had two plates separated. But when I ha what if I have a one steel member? When I cut through it, will I have a two F steel or one F steel? One, right? So what I'm highlighting here is some, some, some popular mistakes that happen in these type of problems. And you all understand why I only add one F steel, right? Another thing, which is like also I mentioned it before, the reason why we put this big plate to have the force distributed over the whole area from the very first point. And if I have, if I didn't have this plate, and I apply the force in a point load like this, I will have some concentrated stresses here. That's why it deformed that way. OK? This is localized stresses. And the reason why it happened, because the area, the, this force is not distributed over the whole area. It's distributed over a small amount of area, and then as you can see here, we have a large deformation, large, large, until everything now is even. So when everything is even, that's when this force is divided by this whole area. So to prevent all these local dis distortions, we added this very thick plate at the beginning 
so that to avoid this localized stresses. Okay. We're not gonna go in like in a very good details about localized stresses. I'm gonna leave this to advanced classes, but like it's important to show you why we do have like why do we add this thick plate? Okay, same concept as in building in foundation. You don't find building like the wall is rested on the ground directly. That's why we put like a thick a thick concrete foundation to have the loads of the building or your house distributed from the very first point it touches the ground. If we don't have this foundation you will have the wall going down, like it will settle, and you will have your kitchen settle differently, your living room will settle differently. I mean, settlement, I mean, it's going into the ground because they are both, they are all considered point load. But if we put the whole house under a very thick slab, that's when I'm sure that at the very beginning, like the whole, um, the whole plan of the land is gonna feel the same stress. Unlike if I didn't use foundation, so the land going to feel separate point loads. That's when you will have, we call it differential settlement in, in, in the building. Your living room going to be like this and your kitchen going to be high. So like, it's horrible. Just like to explain to you the concept of like distributing the load using thick plates. Is that clear? Cool. So another type of problems that what if we have, okay. I'll have you to include this for me. Pen, pen, no loads in the middle. What's called? What's we, what we call this member? Exactly. And what, what, what happens when we see two force member? We cut through them. Okay? But the question here asks you, okay, if we apply the force P, and we do have three link members like this, or two force members, and this is a rigid body. Okay, once you see rigid body, what does that mean? Doesn't, doesn't what? It not doesn't move, it, it does move, but it doesn't bend, or it doesn't local, I mean like it doesn't shape. Uh, let, let me tell you, let me tell you. So rigid body, like the definition for it, let me write you the definition first. It doesn't, so rigid body doesn't deform or shape under physical forces. In different words, if I have the beam like this, and this beam is rigid, that means it's so stiff that when I apply this load like this, this load, it's not going to bend or it's not going to have some sort of localized stresses. The whole beam gonna act as a one body, and this is how it's gonna deform. I mean, it's gonna move the whole thing down. So this is a rigid body. So this is, I can call it rigid body. What is not rigid body is when I apply this force, for example, this one, the beam doesn't deform like this, for example. This is not a rigid body because I have this part behave differently than the other parts. So I have like local deformation here or the beam bend. So in that case, if the beam bend like this, that's also not a rigid body. So rigid body, the whole thing move together, okay, and act like a very stiff element. It's hard to deform any of this element, okay? So let me go back to this problem now. If you are asked, what are the normal stresses in member one and member two? So here is the deformation. Here, how I'm gonna draw the deformation for this. So when I apply this force, This is the deformation. So what is the relation of, of the delta in member one and member two? They are all equal, right? So here's also the same thing. So in compatibility equation, I would write delta one is equal to delta two. And the equilibrium equation 
is that's when you cut through. So this is F1, F1, this is F2, and here's the force P. That's when you cut through the link member. So I can get summation, Fy is equal to zero. I will have two F1 plus F2 minus P is equal to zero. Okay? I think at this, at this, at this point, do you all can conclude a relation between the deltas or no? Okay. I have another question. So we have a rigid body like this, and we have a force in the middle, and we do have member two, and member one and member one. Why, why didn't we call, for example, this member as member three, for example? Okay, that's not only, that's not only the, that's, that's part of the answer, but not like fully the answer. But let me tell you something. If, if member one, if both of them, let's, let's, let's at the beginning say that this one is a steel, because we're gonna change this in the next couple slides. And this is aluminum, for example. If you see the load is in the middle, and this is a rigid body, so if the load in the middle and it's a rigid body, it's gonna deform like this. It's gonna go down like this. If the load in the middle, if we shifted the load a little bit to a side, that's when the rigid body gonna rotate. Again, it's still keeping its same deformity. Let me show you what I mean. So if I have this beam and I applied the load not in the middle, aside. So you should expect that this beam gonna go down like this, right? It's not gonna deform this way, like there, there'll be any deformation that way. It still keeps its same length, same cross section, but it responded to this load like this, okay? Is that clear? That's how the rigid body behaves. So in this question, since the load in the middle, so it's gonna go down. So all member one or the steel, they're gonna every everything gonna deform the same. So that's the first thing. If they deform the same, they have the same length, same area, same material, so they're probably gonna have the same force, right? Because what if, if they deform the same, right? If they have the same deformation, and I don't know the force yet. FL over AE and FL over AE. For example, this is, let me call, this is A, this is B. Delta A, delta B. So F A, L A, 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 then B, 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 B. So if you know that they have a same deformation and they do have the same length, same area, same modulus of elasticity, so don't you think they will have the same force or no? Is that clear? So not only the length tells you, I mean like if, if they have the same length, that's not like a complete answer. They need to satisfy the area and, and the material as well so that you can cross everything together and you'll be left with FA is equal to FB. Okay. We're gonna play with this concept a little bit, okay? Just stick with me. So let's move to this type, the third type of systems is axial members connected to a rotated rigid element. So this is a rigid element. And there is a point here, which is a hinge or a pin. And when we apply the force like this, what do you think the deformation gonna be now? Anyone? Anyone, okay, step one. Look at the force. And from that force, you're gonna start moving the element. And again, this is, this is a rigid body. So this force not gonna take CD like this and everything gonna be straight. That's again, not a rigid body. So if this point gonna move, they all gonna move accordingly. But again, this is a pin. This is not allowed to move. 
So tell me how it's going to deform. Anyone, just, just guess. OK. OK. Anyone else? Just, just with your hand. Is it going to be like this or like this? Correct? Correct. OK, so it's going to deform like this. So if I have this beam, and I do have these two members, these two link members, so it's going to deform this way. OK? I want you to tell me, OK, so member one, this is member one, this is member two. Member one going to elongate by this delta. Member two going to elongate by that delta. Can anyone tell me the relation between delta one and delta two now? OK. You said the angle, right? That's correct. If you see, do you see the triangle here? So that's correct. Using similar triangles, you can find the relation between delta 1 and delta 2. Let me remind you. So if I have, if it's given, and it's going to be given, this lens is 54, and this is 54, do you remember that delta, delta 2, for example, let me write it down here. Delta 2 over 54 plus 54 is equal to delta 1 over 54, which is delta 2 over this whole length equal to delta 1 over this whole length. You remember the similar triangles? So using similar triangles, I was able to find delta 1 and delta 2. But we are not complete yet. The equilibrium equation, the first thing you do, you need to cut through the, OK, P, for example, let's say it's 10, so that you're not confused as if it's unknown. It's not unknown. So I'm going to cut through the link members, or the two force member. I'll have F1 and F2. But I do have A here, which will have two reactions, AX and AY. The question that you need to ask yourself whenever you draw this free by diagram to conclude the equilibrium equation, what relation I want to come out of this beam? I want to find a relation between what and what? Anyone? I want to find a relation between what? Am I interested in AX and AY? No. What am I interested in? F1 and F2. So what should I do to find a relation between F1 and F2? Should I take summation FY? If I took summation Fy, I will have Ay in that equation. In other words, moment, moment about what? That's correct. If I want to get rid about, uh, of like these reactions, because I'm not interested in them, I'm interested in finding a relation between F1 and F2. Do you all agree with him that we need to take a summation moment about A? What does summation moment about A will give me? Summation moment about A will cancel these two forces, which is the two reactions. And then I'm able to find the relation between F1 and F2. Let me show you. What's that? Yeah, I mean, like, we, we, can't, we can't make a cut. Let me see. If you, if you want to make a cut. Between A and F1, OK. And what do you want to find here when you make a cut? I mean, like when you make a cut, you will have the same unknowns in addition to a bending moment. So it's is right. I mean, like it's the same. So if you make a cut, you're going to have the same unknowns and bending moment. But if we don't make a cut, I mean, we, st we still have the same thing. So you are right. It, it is right, but you are adding extra strap. Okay. So if I want to take some measure moment about A is equal to 0, I'm going to assume anything clockwise is positive and anything goes the other way is negative. So I will say. Negative F1 times 54 inches minus F2 times 54 plus 54, 108 inches, plus P, which is 10 times 54 plus 54, 108, and then plus 24, 1. Oh, I'm bad. I'm bad. 
It's okay. That's why we have calculators, right? 32. That's correct. I think 132 or 144. 132. Okay. I trust you. Is equal to zero. So now I do have a relation between f1, f2 here, and here when I further, like, say f2 l fl over a, then I have two equations with two unknown. Okay. Is that clear so far? Because when I, we're going to go a little bit harder. Let's start with that one. So don't be confused about the length members or the two force member in the middle. How is, how, how is this rigid beam going to deform to the 100 kilonewton? That's right. So the same thing, but what's the difference between this problem and the, the previous problem? So it's going to deform this way. And we do have this member one, for example, and this member two. Member one going to deform by delta one, going to elongate by delta one. And what's happening to member two? It's going to shorten by delta two. So similar triangles again, but s delta one over 160 plus 80 is equal to delta 2 over 80, but there will be a negative sign here. Is that clear? OK? One of them is going to elongate. The other one going to shorten. So don't forget the negative sign. OK. Let's go like very, very hard. This one is very hard. OK. I do have this rigid element, OK? And look here. I do have, this is a rigid element. And I do have three force members. And in the question, it told you that members AB and EF each have the same area, OK? And CD, different area. So AB, a, a, let's, let's say A is equal to 50, and this A is equal to 50, and this A, 30, for example. So what you know that they are all, they are all having the same material, the all three length members. AB and EF has diff, like same area, and CD has different area. They all, both have, they all have the same length, same area. Sorry, yeah, same, same sorry. Same length, same material. OK, due to this force, it's not in the middle. How this thing going to deform? Yeah, that's correct. That's correct. One minute. So it's going to deform like this. OK, so member A going to elongate this way. Member CD going to deform this way. Member EF going to deform that way. Here comes another question. So since there is no symmetry, I mean, like the force is not in the middle, OK? And each one elongated differently. So you shouldn't say, let me show you. You shouldn't say F1, F1, F2. In that case, no. I need to have a three separate forces. Any questions? Why do I have three separate forces? Because I have because member one and member three they deform differently. Okay? Although they have the same area, same length, same E, but since they have a different deformation. So the force need to be changed, right? Is that clear? Unlike if I put this force, which is 50, 15 kilonewton in the middle, that's when I agree with you, like the first problem that we had in this class, that this one, I can name it as different. So this will be F1, F1, and this will be F2. But since they deform differently, so I have three forces now. So why is this problem hard? Because how many unknowns do I have now? I have three unknowns, OK? But now you're going to use 
something. Okay, let's, let's do the equilibrium equation here. Equilibrium equation. Okay, and I do have 15 here. Okay, now how many equilibrium equation do I have? So can I use summation fx? No, I can't use summation fx. But I'm going to use summation fy, and I'm going to use summation moment about any point. So let's see. Summation fy is equal to 0. I will have f1 plus f2 plus f3 minus 15. So I put the 15 the other side. So that's the first equation. Let me put in a bracket. And then this is equation 1. Now, summation moment about any point, let me, let me say A. It's not going to matter because I'm going to show you now in the end. So if I take summation moment about A, what I will have, I will have F2 times 0.4 plus F3 times 0.8 minus 15 times 0.2. And I will take the 15 to the other side, so it will be equal 15. So I want to form this equation this way so I can put it in my calculator, which is in this equation, what is, what is f1 equal? It's equal to 0, right? So I will say 0f1 plus 0.4f2 plus 0.8f3 is equal to 15 times 0.2, which is, which is what? I think 3. OK? So here is the other equation, equation 2. So now I have two equations with three unknowns. I need that extra equation. So how, how can I get that extra equation? Bless you. From how we concluded that the, like the relation between, let's say, this is delta AB, and this is delta CD, and this is delta EF. Can I find any relation in this trapezoid-shaped deformation? Anyone? This is like an old school geometry or trig. One minute, let me. Yeah, that's correct. You will see my triangle as well. But let me show you. I will use similar triangle. That's correct. So do you agree with me if I, I have a trapezoid now, right? This is a trapezoid. And I want to do the similar triangle. So I will make this line here, OK? And I'll take this guy out, this guy as well. So you know that the base here for all of them is six, delta EF, right? So this guy, the, if the whole thing is CD, what is this small part? Perfect. So CD minus EF. What about this small guy? AB minus EF. Now for this part, can you do similar triangles? So what will you say? You will say that delta AB minus delta EF over this whole length, which was 0.5. 8 is equal to CD minus EF over 0.4, which is, the, if you want to write here, do we better? 0.4, and this is 0.4. Using, I can, I can um, how do you say it? I can distribute the 0.8 over the two things because this is a property of the common denominator. So AB over 0.8 minus EF over 0.8 is equal to CD over 0.4 minus EF 0.4. Now I, have, now I have two EF, so I can range this equation in a way that I will end up having uh, something F1 plus something F2 plus something F3 is equal to Zero. OK? I'm not going to go through math here, but like you all know, right? You will take the EF to the other side, so I'll end up having one, one EF. And then 
I will, every delta here, it will be F A B L A E, F E F L A B, and then the same thing is <coughs> C D. So now you have the third equation, which have three unknowns. How many equations do I have now? Three equations with three unknowns. You can just plug them in your calculator. I don't want you to do any extra math at this point. So I think your calculator, everyone's calculator, can solve three equations, three unknown. Just put the constants, and it will find the value for you. OK? I, I only know for Casio. So anyone after the lecture can come to me. I'll show it to you how to do that. And I think in, your, in, 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 the, in the calculators that you have, it probably can do it. I'm 100% sure. Just YouTube it, OK? But this hard problem, did you all understand it? OK, let me take a step back and tell you in the last four minutes of this lecture, how can we solve this guy? So now I want you to be quick, because we already, we already did the hard part. This one is like, let's go back to this normal, um, uh, normal type of problem. So equilibrium equation, I do have the steel, and I do have a brass in the middle. OK? OK, you all agree with me that I can make a cut anyway in the beam, right? So is the cut important? Like, is the cut a problem now, or you all got it? Anyone? You can raise your hands. All good? So do you all agree with me? OK, how many unknowns I will have now? So I have the P, which was 9 kips. What should I put in the, in, in the cut? So how many forces will I put? Two. So this one, in the middle it's brass, and the outside, I think it's aluminum. Yeah, it's aluminum. F-A-L. Can you find the relation between both? Yeah. Oh, no. At th okay, at this point, in this class, if there is a point load, just imagine that there is a plate. So, so yeah. So from the very, be very, very first beginning here, the load is equally distributed or the stress is equally distributed. There is no any localized stresses, OK? So what, what equilibrium equation will I choose now? Summation Fy is equal to 0. I will have FAL plus FBR, which is brass, plus 9 is equal to 0. I have the first equation. Yeah, all of you now, tell me the, the compatibility equation. Do you all agree with him? OK. Delta AL is equal to delta BR. What is AL? F, F AL, F L over AE is equal to F BR, L over AE. Here is also some old school math. If the L and the both sides are equal, can I cancel them? Yeah, so I will cancel them. They have different area. And they, of course, have different E, which is like different material. So I will say FAL is equal to aluminum. The radius is 2 inches. So I will say pi, pi 2 square minus pi 1 square, because I want to subtract the brass part times the material, which is aluminum, 10 times 10 power 3, is equal to F brass. Area brass, which is pi 1 square, because the radius here is 1. And then E brass, which was 15 times 10 power 3. So I'm, I'm going to solve this. I put it in my calculator. And I will find FAL. Let me give you the numbers quickly. I will have 0.5 AL is equal to, wait a minute, yeah, FBR. So this is the second equation. And this is the first equation. Solve them together by taking, for example, removing the FBR from this side and put 0.5 EL. So I will say from 1 and 2, 1 and 2, you're going to get FAL and FBR. FAL going to be negative 6 and negative 3 cap. Last thing before you leave, 
does it make sense that both of them are negative or no? What, what does negative mean? That's in compression. And the reason why it got negative because we assumed everything in positive. So everything in positive, if we got a positive, that means it's intention. I mean, like we assume everything in tension. So if anything is negative, means our tension is incorrect, so it's going to be compression. Using these forces, the last part of the question asks you what is the stresses. So take these forces that you calculated now, divide it over their area, and you're going to get the stresses. Any questions so far? Everything's good? OK, I'll see you in the session.